All right, so after we put the numbers in the journal, those were journal entries, right? <clears throat> Uh, and you've already did a few of those, so you know what a debit to cash and a credit to common stock would mean, right? So more cash, more common stock. Uh, that's a very typical transaction for corporations. That's how they start. They start with owners putting money in, in exchange for common stock, shares of ownership. So that's very, very common. Um, and you've put that in the journal. So what happens to those numbers after you put them in the journal? Well, they do a little bit of traveling. Okay, they do a little bit of traveling. Uh, where do they travel to? Uh, they travel to a huge, what used to be a very huge book called the General Ledger. Um, and I don't know if you've ever watched an older film, uh, an older movie, and you'll see accounting, accountant's desks with these huge, huge books. Some of them would be journals, uh, the ones that you were just writing in last time, but others would be ledgers. And the ledger basically is a very large book that keeps track of everything that's happening in each account, okay? So everything that happened in the cash account would show up under cash in the ledger. So just what happened to cash would show up just in the cash account in the ledger. Another account, right, the accounts would be listed in balance sheet order, by the way. So another, uh, the next account you would see would be uh, something like accounts receivable. And it would have its own separate section in the ledger and everything that happened to accounts receivable would be shown there, okay. Um, once we put the numbers in the journal, we have to transfer them into the ledger. And that process is called posting. Okay, so posting to the ledger simply means we're transferring the numbers from the journal into its a specific account in the ledger. Okay, so many of you have never seen a ledger, um, but they, they are enormous in many cases. Back in the day, they were enormous books. Thankfully, all uh, accounting records these days are very uh, neatly put together through the accounting software packages that we have. Um, but a ledger basically is the entire group of an accounts that a company is maintaining. All of them, every single one uh, is listed in the ledger. And it's almost like listed like in a chapter form. Chapter one would simply be dedicated to, in this case, the cash account. Uh, the second part of the, of the book, what we would call chapter two in a, in a book, would be dedicated to everything that happened in the next account, which in this case is supplies. The ledger actually lists the accounts separately, but the assets are listed first in the ledger. So the cash account would be, in essence, the first chapter of the ledger. You open up the ledger, there's the cash account, Everything and anything that's ever happened to the cash account is shown there. Then after the cash account, the next section of the ledger would be the next account listed on the balance sheet. Here, it's listed as supplies. So the supplies account would be listed. Everything that's ever happened to supplies would be shown in the supplies account in the ledger. Again, it's a separate record from what happened in all the other accounts. Land is, is next, equipment is next, et cetera. So this, uh, this is how they would be listed. The second group of accounts that would be listed in the ledger are the liability accounts, the way you, you would show them on a classified balance sheet. Notes payable would be there. And again, only what's happening in notes payable would show in that part. You would flip the page or go to the next part and you'd see uh, it's dedicated to everything that's ever happened in accounts payable. So the ledger keeps separate records for each account. Um, the interesting part here is in this last group, uh, the third group of accounts literally are the stockholders equity accounts, common stock and retained earnings, but it ends with the dividends account. The dividends account is grouped with these. The fourth types of accounts that are listed in the ledger are the revenue accounts. Each particular revenue account would have its own separate section in the ledger. 
And the very last type of account that would be listed in the ledger would be all the expense accounts. And again, each expense account would have its own section in the ledger and whatever happened in that account would show there. Okay, so uh, the ledger is an important uh, book in accounting, um, just as the journal is. But the ledger is the second spot. Journal is where everything starts, then the numbers travel to the ledger, and you're gonna see how that happens here. Uh, oh, actually, in the next slide. Just to know that when you start a business, once you start a business, remember you have to do accounting for your business. Um, so what actually one of the first things that you need to do is set up what's called a chart of accounts. This is an example of Sierra Corporation's chart of accounts. Uh, and it basically, Sierra Corporation being a, right, they do hiking tours in the Sierra Nevada. Um, they have started uh, saying, look, we're gonna, we're gonna have a, a certain number of asset accounts. And these are the common accounts that they would have to start their business. You can always add to them later. Uh, these are the liability accounts that we're gonna, that we are starting with. These are the stockholders equity accounts. There's the revenue uh, account. We only have one revenue account because all we do is tours. So we classify that as service revenue. And we have individual expense accounts. There are several listed right here. <clears throat> Each of these accounts, starting with cash, going all the way through till it ends with depreciation expense, would have its own separate section in the ledger. Okay. Which means you can turn to the ledger for service revenue. And the only thing you'll see in the ledger is everything that happened to service revenue. You can turn to the front and go to the cash account. Everything that happened to cash would be separate and kept in separate records. It's almost like having a very large chest of drawers and each one of these accounts has its own separate drawer that, you, that they would drop things in. Uh, that's basically how it's done in essence, electronically in accounting. Your numbers go in, uh, the accounts and numbers go into the journal. They transfer over to their respective drawers or accounts in the ledger here. But this is actually the very first thing you have to do when you start a business is say, okay, what accounts are we going to be using? Because you can't do accounting without having accounts. So let's not put the cart before the horse. So how it works is you've been focusing on the last uh, objective is putting an entry in the journal, okay? So this is a journal entry. And so what you did here for Sierra Corporation on October the 1st was you debited cash for $10,000 and you credited common stock for $10,000, okay? Um, well, that's the journal. Now that we have put the journal entry in, the numbers have to be transferred to their specific accounts in the ledger. The ledger keeps all these accounts separately. So the cash account will have its own record. The common stock account will have its own record in the ledger. It's like, again, turning to two separate chapters in a book, right? One chapter at the very beginning of the book, one chapter toward the middle or end of the book, right? Very two separate chapters. Uh, in this case, these are two separate accounts that we keep track of. So this particular journal entry showed a debit to cash in the journal. We then have to transfer, which is what posting is, transferring the entry to the ledger. We transfer that debit into the general ledger cash account on the debit side, showing that that happened on October the 1st because we issued stock. Now we're gonna get into these reference things, okay? These, this little column that says references here, I'll get to that. The debit, of course, this is, in, this is in the debit column for cash. So it goes in the debit column for cash in the ledger. <clears throat> the general journal is listed by page number. This is page number J1, which basically is journal page one. So when this goes into the general ledger, the J1 reference indicates that, look, this came from the journal page one. But the, but the ledger 
uh, numbers all their accounts because all the accounts are separate. So in this case, cash is assigned account 101. Um, and so the reference here in the journal would say this was posted to account 101, which is the cash account in the ledger. So those are just references. You're not going to have to worry about those. Um, they're, uh, they're not required in any of the homework that we do, but it is something that you will see and it's done actually automatically uh, with the accounting software programs that, uh, that exist today. The reference, the cross references are already done, which is great. So again, the most important thing to know is in this case, we had a debit to cash of 10,000 in the journal. We have to transfer that 10,000 into the cash account in the ledger on the debit side. Now, because cash is an asset account and debits increase asset accounts, that is also the balance in the cash account. $10,000 debit to cash is this, and that's the only thing that happened in cash, means we have $10,000 uh, in cash. $10,000 debit balance in cash means we have cash. So this is the whole idea of posting, okay? So posting is all about transferring the journal entry into the specific ledger account. Now, what you didn't see here on this is what, you know, you're gonna do the exact same thing to the common stock account with this credit on the $10,000 credit side. Common stock is gonna have its own account in the ledger. It's gonna have its own account number in the ledger. And you're gonna to have to transfer that into the common stock account in the ledger on the credit side. That's basically what posting is, is about. So let's take a look at um, the process, which is very, very important. Uh, if you have your book with you, um, this process starts on page 111. So it's interesting that it's page one of 11, but it's actually page 111 <laughs> in, in the book. Um, <clears throat> and it actually shows you all the stuff that we've done to the journal entry and then what happens when we post to the ledger. Now, what you have to do is, um, and you need to be alert because I'm going to be asking you questions as we go through this, uh, just to understand that these are two separate accounts that are going to be in different places in the ledger. They just put them side by side to show you what would happen in the ledger to that account. So don't get the fact that these are side by side is like that's the way it is. It's just, they're trying to rip out the pages of the ledger and show it to you separately. Uh, and that's, that's the best they could do here. Um, but these would be in two separate places in, in the ledger. Look at all the stuff we've done. We've had events. We've done some analysis of those events. We analyzed uh, that event. In this case, we had more cash, more common stock. You learned about debit and credit analysis, right? The debit side of the cash account means more cash, but the credit side of the common stock account means more common stock. Um, you did your journal entry, debit to cash, credit to common stock. And now we're doing posting. We're simply transferring the numbers into their accounts in the ledger. And again, these are separate pages in the ledger. So this $10,000 debit to cash is posted on the debit side of the cash account with the date. This $10,000 credit to common stock is posted in the common stock account on the credit side with the date. That is posting. That is what you're going to be doing. We're gonna go through all of the events so you can see how it's done, okay? Event number two, as you remember, Sierra Corporation borrowed money in a note payable. We did an analysis of that. I said, okay, we have more cash, more notes payable. We did our debit and credit analysis. What side of the cash accounts affected? The debit side. What side of the uh, notes payable account is affected? The credit side. We wrote it in the journal as a debit to cash and a credit to notes payable. Right. The next step after the journal is we post it into the ledger 
in their separate accounts. Again, even though the, these pages are side by side in the book here, it's just, these, these would be in different sections of the ledger, separate pages, separate sections. So the first thing you notice is there's that $5,000 debit to cash. It's posted in the cash account on the debit side. This $5,000 credit to notes payable is posted on the credit side of the notes payable account in the ledger, again with the date. So here's my first open question to you. And I'd like to have new participants every time I throw out a question. Um, <clears throat> the question is, if I asked you what the balance in the cash account would be, what would you tell me? Uh, would it be 5,000 credit or debit, 5,000 debit? Um, well, what happened to the other, that other money disappeared? Yeah, I was going to say, is it 15,000? Ah, yeah, 15. Right. So you would say, again, only two things can happen to the accounts, right? Um, yes, Michelle, that's correct. So only two things can happen in the, in each account, right? You're either going to have more of it or less of it. Um, and in this case, you have two postings to the cash account, both on the debit side. The debit side means more cash. These are two separate events. So the 10,000 is money that was put in early. The 5,000 is money that's put in now. $15,000 balance. But in, a, in accounting, you have, to tell, you, you have to tell us what side the balance is on. So as Michelle was writing, the correct answer would be, cash has a $15,000 debit balance. Can everyone understand that? This is how we're gonna to have to talk. All right. Cash has a $15,000 debit balance. It's gonna be a running total. There's 11 events. Pay attention, because there's gonna be more questions. Okay, nice job, nice job. All right. What's the balance in notes payable, by the way? How would you say it to me as an, as an accountant? Anybody? Five thousand credit. Yeah, it would be a five thousand dollar credit balance, right? Again, the balance you would say as a either a debit balance or a credit balance. You say the amount, and then either debit balance or credit balance, depending on what side it's on. Okay. All right. So you get used to it. This is. Part of the learning, it's all good, it's all good. Hang in there, you're doing swell. Event number three. <laughs> Sorry, my parents are in South COVID Lina. Ah, you know, they retired down there. And um, it's very interesting to, to visit. I go down quite a bit. Be you know, beautiful place, nice people. Yeah. Just uh, throw the accent in every now and then. Just for fun. Gio can, can relate to that. He's smiling all the way. And then number three, we used $5,000 of cash to buy equipment. We analyzed it. Okay, well, we have more equipment, but we used cash, so we have less cash. Um, that's how we, uh, how we analyzed it. We applied our debit and credit analysis, uh, which meant that we had more equipment, which happens on the debit side. Um, okay, uh, and we have less cash, which happens on the credit side. So in the journal, we put that together, debit equipment for 5,000, credit cash for 5,000. Now it's time to post. Bum, ba -dum, bum. So we're transferring that $5,000 debit to the equipment account on the debit side. It happened on October 2nd, so we put the date and, in this case, the debit. But this $5,000 credit to cash has to go on the credit side of the cash account for October 2nd. So now, here's my question. What is the balance in cash? Sorry. 
silence. Uh-oh, I got two little things here. Some folks are typing away pretty good. A $10,000 debit balance, okay? You don't give, and, and, and this is a common thing. As some people will say, uh, what you just wrote, 15,000 debit balance, credit uh, balance of 5,000. Well, we don't say that. We don't say that. Um, it's almost like if I asked you, what's, you know, how much money is in your savings account? You said, well, I have, you know, I put $10,000 of deposits in and I took out $5,000 of withdrawals. Ah, you know I mean? That, that's not a balance, right? Um, so in this case, the cash account has a $10,000 debit balance. How is that? Well, because the debit side had $15,000 of increases, the credit side had $5,000 of decreases. So what's the difference? $10,000. What side is that on? The debit side. So the cash account has a $10,000 debit balance. It's almost like this and this cancel each other out, right? So the balance is what's left. The balance is what's left and you save the side. So it's a $10,000 debit balance in the cash account. We're going to be practicing. You're going to be like superstars in like 50 minutes. All right. Event number four. Golly. Um, Sierra Corporation happened on October the 2nd. Uh, they got that cash advance of $1,200 from their client, R. Knox, for guided services sometime in the future. We analyzed this quite a bit. Okay, we got a bunch of cash, but now we owe this guy a bunch of tours. <laughs> and we said, okay, that means we have more cash or we have more unearned service revenue. Cash, more cash shows up on the debit side more unearned service revenue shows up on the credit side of that account because it's the liability account. So then we put our journal entry together, debit of cash, 1,200, credit unearned service revenue, 1,200. Now it's time to post. This $1,200 on the debit side of cash will be posted for October 2nd on the debit side of the cash account. This $1,200 credit <clears throat> for unearned service revenue is going to be posted on the credit side of unearned service revenue. Okay, you know what's coming. What is the balance in cash now? 11,200 cash balance to debit. All right, a uh, few words in different places, but you're on the right track. It's an $11,200 debit balance in the cash account, right? Well, the cash account has an $11,200 debit balance. Um, so again, we're saying what the number is and what side, right? So debit balance is on that left side, which is what the cash account is. Um, so that's good, that's good. Nick, thank you, thank you for that. Does everyone, um, let me ask you just generally, what's the, uh, what's the balance in the unearned service revenue account? $1,200 credit balance, and Michelle is, is correct. So the unearned service revenue account has a $1,200 uh, credit balance in, it, in its account. See? I can see a little Spanish there. Okay, sorry. Uh, all right, event number five. Uh, we received on the 3rd of October now, Sierra Corporation got $10,000 cash from providing services, guided tour services. So we analyzed this. We said, okay, we got a bunch of, we got more cash. Why did we get all that cash? Well, because we did work. Once you do the work, it's service revenue, right? Sierra Corporation does tours, they did tours. The word provided is past tense, all are done, all done. Right? Completed, delivered, provided, past tense, work is done. Um, so if it's done, you've earned it, which means it's revenue. In this case, uh, the only revenue account Sierra Corporation has is service revenue. So that's the account that goes up. Uh, we did our debit and credit analysis. We know cash goes up on the debit side. Revenue goes up on the credit side. So our journal entry reflects that. 
debit to cash, 10,000, credit to service revenue, 10,000. Now comes the posting, transferring of those numbers into the specific accounts. So this $10,000 debit to cash is gonna be posted in the cash account on the debit side. The $10,000 credit to service revenue will be posted to service revenue on the credit side. So, you know what's coming. What is the balance in the cash account? Michelle says, and Ryan both say, it's a $21,200 debit balance. That is correct, okay? $21,200 debit balance. Well, because the, uh, the debit side of the account is greater than the credit side of the account by $21,200. You see? Uh, the revenue account has a $10,000 credit balance in it. Right? The right side of the account is the credit side. That's where the balance is. That's why we say it's a credit balance. Okay. A few wind gusts coming out here or off of you. On the 3rd of October, we paid rent, 900 bucks. Actually, that's pretty cheap. I wish my rent was 900 bucks. Anyway, um, we did some analysis there. We said, okay, well, all landlords wanna get paid in cash, so we certainly have less cash. But expenses take away from the net income or the profits of the company. So we actually have less net earnings. The more expenses we have, the less retained earnings we have, in essence. We did our debit and credit analysis. We know that debits to expenses increase expenses and also decrease retained earnings at the same time. Cash, we have less cash. That's a credit to cash. That's what our journal entry looks like, a debit to rent expense, a credit to cash. As you see, cash is a pretty active account. Lots of things happening in cash. Mm -hmm. So this $900 debit to rent expense gets posted on the debit side for October the 3rd in the rent expense account. Again, this is way back in the ledger. If it was a, still a big book, you'd be looking way back and say, oh, rent expense, $900 debit. Okay, that's the balance. This credit to cash is going to be posted here on the credit side. So now, what is the balance in the cash account? Ooh, I'm getting multiple responses in the chat. Ooh, I kind of love it. Okay. Paul and Gio and Michelle and Ryan all say it's $20,000, $20,300 debit balance, and that would be correct. Okay. The balance in the cash account is now $20,300 on the debit side, debit balance. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and the rent expense has a $900 debit balance. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. All right, we keep going. Uh, number seven, event number seven, we paid $600 for an insurance policy. When we buy insurance, as you know, that's an asset, but we're gonna use it quickly, so it's a current asset. Um, we did our little analysis here showing that we had more insurance, but we have less cash. Um, debit and credit analysis, they're both assets. So they both increase on the debit side and they both decrease on the credit side. We have more prepaid insurance that gets the debit. We have less cash that gets the credit. This is what our journal entry looks like, a debit to prepaid insurance, a credit to cash. Mm -hmm. We post it right, separately. Again, these are all separate sections of the ledger. Uh, that $600 debit gets posted in the ledger on the uh, prepaid insurance account on the debit side for October the 4th. And this $600, is gonna be posted on the credit side of cash. So, 
We all know it's coming. What is the balance in the cash account? All right, we've got Megan, Michael, and Michelle all saying that it's a $19,700 debit balance in the cash account. Would everyone agree with that? Sure. Good, good, good. All right, nice job. The next event, <clears throat> event eight, Ocho. Ocho is by far my favorite number. I think I told you if I had a puppy, I would name him Ocho. Here, Ocho. Of course, it's all in my head because I don't have a dog. That's okay, I'm on good medication for that. All right, so on the 5th of October, <clears throat> they bought supplies. How did they buy them? Well, they bought them on account, which means they were able to purchase those supplies and they got a nice bill to pay later. They said, okay, here, here's the supplies, but here's a bill. Pay us later. <clears throat> we analyzed that. We said, we definitely got more supplies, but we got more bills to pay now. So this particular bill is just a regular bill, so it's an accounts payable due in 30 days. We did our debit and credit analysis. Assets increase on the debit side, liabilities increase on the credit side. So we have our debit to supplies for 2,500, credit to accounts payable for 2,500. That's the journal entry. What happens after that? Well, they each get posted in their specific account. In this case, there's nothing else that was happening in these accounts. <clears throat> So this $2,500 debit to supplies will be posted in the supplies account on the debit side. Accounts payable credit posted on the credit side <clears throat> of the accounts payable. So uh, if I was your accounting manager, I said, how much, you know, how much do we have in supplies? What's your balance on supplies? What, what would you tell me? $2,500 debit balance in supplies. That would be it. Capiche? Do, do we have an understanding? I just don't want anything bad to happen. You know what I mean? It's just, I'm the godfather of accounting. I just don't want nothing bad to happen. You know what I mean? People, come on. Event number nine. Happened on October the 9th. They hired four employees. Well, it doesn't matter how much you promise to pay them. You could promise to pay them a million dollars each. You're not paying them up front. Okay. No one gets paid up front. So uh, this is not an event because the financial condition of the company did not change when it occurred. It will change <clears throat> once they start working for you and you got to pay them. But when you interview them, when you hire them, nothing has changed financially. Mm -hmm. Event number 10, paid a dividend, $500 dividend, cash dividend. We analyzed this. We said, okay, well, if we paid cash, we certainly have less cash. But we know from looking at our retained earnings statement that when we, had, when we looked at dividends, we took them away from retained earnings. So in essence, the more dividends the company paid out, the less their retained earnings were, the less their stock goals equity were. Because dividends decreases stockholders' equity, it's on the debit side of the account. And of course, less cash is on the credit side. So the journal entry would reflect that a debit to the dividends account of 500, a credit to cash of 500. <clears throat> Not much going on in the dividends account other than this, so it's an easy thing to post. Cash, as you know, very busy. This $500 credit gets posted in the cash account on the credit side for the 20th of October. And the question becomes, what's the balance in cash?
Anybody else want to chime in? Michelle and Paul both say it's a $19,200 debit balance. And would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Nice job. Thank you. All right. And the very last event, event number 11 here, at the end of the month, we actually pay those employees that we hired. Now, this is a transaction, we're paying them. So in this case, uh, all of you work for cash. So when, uh, when a business pays the employees, they pay with cash, less cash. Remember, the expenses take away from the income, the profits of the company. So the more expenses that are happening, the less equity there is. So expenses are also on the debit side, or express them on the debit side of the account. So the journal entry would be a debit to salaries or wages expense for 4,000 and cash would get the offsetting credit for 4,000. We would go ahead and post this uh, debit to the salaries or wages expense uh, account in the ledger. This $4,000 credit will be coming all the way down here to cash. And so this is the last one. So let me ask you, what is the balance in the cash account now? I've already opened the chat, just waiting for the answer since no one wants to talk. Everyone wants to type today. Okay, it's fine. Be that way. Mm hmm. Only Michelle has chimed in. Anybody else? Okay, Paul has added his voice to this. Anybody else? All right, so uh, the cash account does have a debit balance of $15,200. The debit side is greater than the credit side by $15,200. So the balance is on the debit side. Okay, $15,200. Uh, are we okay with that? We understand that. So what you're gonna look at now is what the journal would look like for this company after all these transactions and what the ledger would look like after all that posting is done. So this is what the journal would look like. If you have your book uh, with you or handy, this is on page 117. These are all the transactions that we put into the journal for Sierra Corporation that we just reviewed. It uh, goes on to the next page or the next slide here. That's the entire journal, if you printed it out, for everything that happened to Sierra. Uh, after we posted them into the ledger, <clears throat> this would be a snapshot of each account in the ledger. The cash account is listed first. Uh, as a bunch of you said, the balance in the cash account was a $15,200 debit balance, and there it is. Everyone see that? So if I asked you what the balance in the cash account was, you'd look in the cash account in the ledger, and you'd see that there's $15,200 debit balance, and that would be your answer. Okay. The supplies account is listed next. It has a balance of $2,500 debit balance in the supplies account. Prepaid insurance is listed next, $600 debit balance. Equipment is listed next, $5,000 debit balance. The assets are always gonna be listed in the order they would be on the classified balance sheet. Each of them would have its own little separate section in the ledger. Mm -hmm. Liabilities are listed second, Notes payable would have a $5,000 credit balance. Accounts payable has a $2,500 credit balance. And unearned service revenue has a $1,200 credit balance. Those are your liabilities. Common stock, retained earnings, which there are none, and dividends are listed next. That's the third group that's listed. Common stock has a $10,000 credit balance. Dividends has a $500 debit balance in the account. 
revenue is listed, $10,000 credit balance, and then your expenses. The, uh, the ledger will list the expenses in the order they're supposed to be in. Um, that doesn't always happen in this book. That's one of the criticisms I have that I've noticed. So salaries and wages expense has a $4,000 debit balance. Rent expense has a $900 debit balance. Those are all the accounts that we know of right now for Sierra Corporation, and those are the balances, okay? So we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna stop this right here for a minute. Um, I'm gonna stop the share, bring us back to this.